Welcome to Session 10 of Complexity Explorer's MESA Tutorial, Agent-Based Modeling and Type. In this session, we'll continue with Part 2 of 4 of our Agent's Move function, where we identify all possible neighbors that our trader agents can move to. Uh, let's get started. Please open up your CoLab or other development environment, and we'll begin. So first, you want to make sure that your dependencies are imported, uh, and that you've linked your sugarmap.txt file either as a file uh, or through uh, linking it with your Google Drive. All right. Then we have our resource classes, uh, sugar and spice. And we won't be engaging with these in this session, so you can collapse this if you would like. Next is our trader agent uh, class all right, that we started last time where we added the boot function. We'll be using the rest of our, the time for our tutorial. And then our model class where we initiate the model and our step functions that do a stage random activation that call uh, our that calls at this point our agent move function. Uh, so I make sure we run this, right? And then just to make sure it's running from last time, we instantiate an instance of our model and then run it for one step. All right, so that's working. Now we can begin to update our agent move function. As always, it's important to have good comments so you or other users uh, can uh, understand what's happening in the model. Now, in this case, there's more formal ways to uh, pass through uh, arguments and, and discuss returns, uh, which will be shown a little bit later, but go beyond the scope uh, of this tutorial. All right, so first, uh, what's our move function going to do? It's a function for identifying a trader agent uh, to identify the optimal move location for each step. All right, and this is going to occur in four parts. So the first part, which we're going to discuss here, is identify all the neighboring cells that the agent can move to. Right? So what are the possible moves that the agent can make? Right? The next one, is, uh, which will be the next session, well, uh, is to determine which of those cells will uh, provide the maximum welfare uh, to the agent. Right? And then finally, right, you want to identify the nearest cell and this is per growing artificial societies. And then uh, for that one, it will just be one uh, function called for MESA uh, to move the trader agent from the cell that they're in uh, to that particular cell. For part one, in order to identify all possible moves, we're going to use Python's list comprehension and uh, Mesa's uh, get neighborhood function in order to create a list of all possible cells that the agent can move to. All right, so we're going to create a local variable for our move function called neighbors. All right, and then neighbors is going to equal a list that iterates through all of, uh, all of the um, uh, all the neighbors based off the vision that that agent has. All right, so be neighbors equals and then open brackets i for i in self. All right, so now we've got to uh, refer to um, our model class that has the grid function in it because that's where the function uh, of get neighbors is stored. Right, so the agent variable, the agent class has a local variable called model. Right, in model we established our grid. Right, and in the grid class in Mesa, right, uh, is a function called get neighbor. Right, and just to be clear about that, we can show that that class. Uh, we can show the actual code in that class uh, from uh, from Mesa's GitHub repository or from your locally stored version. Right, so if we go directly to that line. You can see here here that this is the get neighborhood function in Mesa's uh, space, right? And there's a couple parameters. There's a position, your more, right? Whether you're using your more of a Neumann neighborhood, right? Whether or not to include the center and the radius. For us, the radius is the vision of our agents. If you remember from the instantiation, some agents could see up to five cells uh, in any direction, and some agents could see only one cell, uh, which matters in their competitive fitness on the landscape. All right, so we have to pass in 
uh, each of the, these parameters. So first is the, the position, right? That's a class attribute called self.pop. We have to do our self.more, which is set the faults because we're using the von Neumann neighbor, you know, up, down, uh, left, right, not the diagonals, right? And then uh, whether or not we include the center. Now that by default in Mesa is set to false, so we got to set it to true in the sense that the trader agents can stay uh, on the cell if that gives them the highest fitness. Right? And then finally, we pass in our self that vision uh, parameter, which translates to how far the radius uh, that you use for your Git neighborhood and is how far any agent can see, right? based off our initiation of each trader agent uh, in our model class, right? The final criteria based off growing artificial societies is a trader agent cannot move to a cell where there's another trader agent, right? So if it is not occupied, right, then uh, this is a permissible cell for, or grid space for this trader agent to move to, right? So for this part, part we will add a uh, helper function called uh, is occupied by other, uh, and then we will uh, uh, use that to determine whether or not that cell should be added to the uh, added to our list. All right, so we just create a function inside the class called is occupied by other, right, with underscores. And you have the uh, kind of Python syntax required self. All right, and this will take one parameter, which is your position. All right, then we'll put some comments in here. Uh, and typically, you would, uh, or so this could be a helper function, and a more formal uh, uh, commenting, you would put that pos uh, is a tuple all right, uh, that, that is passed in as the argument. Right, and it returns, a, and this function will return a boolean, right, true or false, uh, on whether it is occupied by a trader instance. Right, so first, uh, the agents are allowed to stay in their same position. Right, so if the position we're passing in is the same as the agent's position, self dot pos, right, then we could just return false. Right, so the significance of going back to the uh, the activation method here is that sugar and spice each grow. And then all the agents determine whether all the trader agents determine whether or not they should move. Right? So it's possible that an agent with a low metabolism uh, uh, for sugar and spice, right, and depending on where they're at in the the space, may want to stay at one spot and just harvest that one growth of sugar and spice uh, for each step. So if that's the case, we return false uh, because uh, it is not occupied by another agent. Now we have to put a conditional if it is occupied by another agent. To do that, it's fairly straightforward. First, make sure your indents are aligned uh, properly. All right, but we have to get our uh, uh, the contents of uh, the cell that we're looking at. Uh, Mesa has a function for that. Uh, uh, so again, we refer back to the local model instance inside this agent. We use our grid uh, uh, grid attribute that we set up in our initial model, uh, and then we use the Mesa function uh, get cell list contents, right? And we pass in the parameter pos. Right. So again, just to emphasize, the trader agent has an attribute called model, which refers to the model class. Right in that model class is an attribute called grid, where we instantiate a grid space for Mesa space dot pi, right? and then uh, we use a function from that class to call get cell list, which takes the parameter position. Right? Once we get that, right, then we want to iterate through all the possible contents of that cell. Right, that function returns a list to see if it's occupied by another trader agent. So to be thorough, just like we were with the Git neighborhood, we could go inside Mesa's code, and in this case I'm using GitHub, but it's also locally uh, on your installed version, as well as through the documentation. And we can see how the Git cell list contents, uh, contents actually looks, and that's just part of 
Mesa's space.py file, which contains the grid class we instantiated uh, when we set up our model class. All right. And from that, you can see that it returns a list. All right, and now we iterate through this list in order to determine if it is an instance of trader. All right, so for A, or, or it should be some type of agent, whether sugar, spice, or trader agent, now we could just put a conditional that uh, uh, determines what it is. So we could use Python's is instance, right? And then this takes two parameters, our A for our agent object that, uh, that may be in a cell list, right? And then trader, all right? So if that object is an instance of our trader class, make sure traders capitalize T, right? Uh, then we want to return true, right? That would tell us that it is occupied. Uh, and so it would not be added to the list comprehension uh, that we're using uh, in the uh, in our agent boot function. Okay, now if it isn't, so it's either not the cell that we're in, right, uh, and the cell is not occupied by a trader agent, then we're going to return false. Right, so that means that it can be added to our uh, list comprehension. Okay, and so now we have. Uh, our helper function is occupied by other. And again, this criteria uh, was established uh, in the growing artificial societies uh, uh, movement rules uh, that Rob Axtell and Josh Epstein set up. All right, so now we have a pretty good uh, kind of, uh, where we have completed our move function. All right, so we now want to verify that it's doing what we think it's doing. All right, so easy way to do that is just to add our print function. All right, and we want to uh, check to make sure, uh, so we can check it in this case by going, what's our position, and then what is the list of positions we're getting out of our neighbors, All right? Uh, if our self that position is also in our neighbors, then we know we have our uh, our Boolean function set up correctly, uh, and, uh, and the function is doing what we expect it to do, which is provide a list of possible move locations our trader agent is allowed to go to. All right, so after we do that, we'll just run it. And sure enough, we're getting what, at least partially what we think, right? Which is you get a, uh, a tuple of our position, and then you get a list of tuples uh, of the grid locations of everything else. Uh, and you can see here that the uh, self dot position is also uh, in the uh, list of tuples, which means that our function uh, is working the way we expect it to, uh, and that we are sufficiently identifying the possible or allowable move locations our trader agent can go to. All right, so thanks for joining session 10. Right, and the next one, we'll look through all those uh, positions and we'll determine which position gives each agent the maximum welfare. Right, thanks again, and we'll see you next time.